Dear audience, Sylvia Mixer is my name, and I want to talk to you about the endobelly in patients with endometriosis. These are my conflicts of interest. As patients with endometriosis suffer often from unspecific bowel symptoms like cyclical diarrhea, constipation, and cyclical bloating. All these are symptoms of IBS. Also, they suffer often from vegetative concomitant reactions, vomiting, nausea, dizziness, stomachache, and collapse. Some of my patients came and showed me this picture of their bloated abdomen, and they, that has a very high impact on their daily life, and it's also very, very painful. So they started the discussion in Germany and Europe about the endobelly. They call this endobelly. And we started also to think about it. What is it and why does it happen? We looked in the literature about coincidences with IBS and IBD. If there's something about the microbioma, if there is something about hormones, or if we have a dysfunction of the bowel wall. The first question was is if if there is a connection between endometriosis and bowel symptoms, and here this case cohort study confirms this, that endometriosis patients versus non-endometriosis patients have higher, more abdominal discomfort and pain, more constipation, bloating and flatulence, imperative stool urgency, bowel dysfunction impaired the daily life. That is a fact. And they showed a whole high coincidence with IBS and IBD. Chiaffarino did a review about this topic, uh, about endometriosis and IBS. They did a systematic review and a meta-analysis. And as you can see here, they found a couple of publications and all these publications confirmed um, the status that endometriosis patients have a higher risk for IBS. Another interesting topic is also if the bowel symptoms are caused by visceral hypersensitivity in endometriosis. And uh, that is also an interesting study here. They investigated the pain threshold, the bowel pain threshold in patients with endometriosis and also in patients with IBS. And they used a balloon distension of the bowel to, to make this pain threshold measurement. The pain threshold was low in patients with endometriosis as well as in IBS patients and um, in correlation to control patients. So patients underwent laparoscopy and um, they have an exclusion of endometriosis or other abdominal pain reasons. That is very interesting and important to know that the pain is real in patients with endometriosis. It's really the visceral hypersensitivity, uh, a cause of this pain in, in these patients. So we looked for the microbioma, if there are something uh, different in patients with uh, endometriosis, you know that it's a very, very complex topic and we are not able to go, go through all the publications about this. Young and all did a good summary of the data and they found or summarized that patients with endometriosis have often um, differences in the ratio between um, some bacteria in, uh, in the bowel and that is different, uh, or yeah, that is different to healthy patients. They have often uh, uh, a stable ratio of bacteria like Firmicutes and Bacterioides. They created this pathophysiological concept, and that is also very complex, but also really interesting. And I try to explain. So endometriosis leads to a pro-inflammatory intra-abdominal uh, milieu. And this could um, impair the gut function, and this could be a reason for dysbiosis of the bowel.
So on the other hand, the dysbiosis leads also to immune dysregulation, for example, with a higher level of, of E. coli with activation of the LPS system. Uh, that leads also to impairment of the gut function and weakened barrier function. And all these are also triggers for an activation of the innate and adaptive immunity, leading also to pro-inflammatory situation in the intraabdominal cavity. Another point, and that is also very interesting, is that maybe a dysbiosis leads to a normal estrobolome. What is the estrobolome? That is, are that bacteria which are able to produce estrogen. And an increased estrogen level is also a trigger for endometriosis. And also endometriotic lesions are able to release estrogen. So all this is then a trigger for development of further endometriotic lesions. So I think that is complex but interesting and we need to think about it. Bringing everything together, the microbiome, the metabolome, the products, the metabolo metabolic products of the bacteria and also the estrobolome, so the release of estrogen due to um, biotic um, bacteria, leads in summary to a pro-inflammatory situation and um, that is so that could be the reason and a good explanation that the bowel is different in patients with endometriosis. Another point we need to regard is that the bowel activity is gender dependent. We have the motility of the, the uh, bowel is regulated by an enteric nerve system. And this is regulated also by sex hormones. It's sex difference. It shows sex differences. And especially patients um, or a lot of patients, a lot of women suffer from a lightly bloated abdomen in the um, uh, proliferative, in the, excuse me, in the secretory phases of the cycle in the progestogen dominant uh, cycle phase. But in patients with endometriosis, it's extreme. Um, and this could be due uh, plus, um, neuroplastic changes in the enteric nerve fiber system. We need to think about it. Another point we try to regard if the bowel motility is different in patients with endometriosis, and we found it old publication, they looked for the motility, the contractility pattern of the bowel movements in non-endometriosis patients and in endometriosis patients. And as you can see here, in the non-endometriosis patients, it's highly um, regular, uh, a very smooth pattern of the uh, bowel function. But in patients with endometriosis, it's complete irregular. Uh, uncoordinated and so on. And that might be also a reason for the distension of the bowel and um, the high load of gas in the abdominal uh, bowel of patients with endometriosis. Mark Noir thinking that uh, the high levels of pro prostaglandins um, due to endometric tissue is a trigger also for this unique um, pattern of the bowel movements in patients with endometriosis. Another point we need to regard is the question if the food has an impact on the symptoms. And 55% uh, of the patients um, report that intake of food has an influence on endometriosis-related pain. In 70%, they can uh, improve the symptoms, but 30% of the patients report also that uh, due to um, special things like histamine, there's also an impairment um, of the symptoms. 30, more than 30% 30 of the patients suffer from allergies and food intolerances or both lactose intolerance and gluten intolerance is very common in these patients. Kappenburg et al. summarized that in removal of gluten, sugar, and soy leads to 
improvement of the symptoms. Also, limited consumption is better than nothing. And uh, the supplementation of vegetables, ginger and fruits leads also to improvement of the bowel situation. What is helpful? What else is helpful? We looked for other studies in um, looking for this criteria. And this is a study done in patients with endometriosis and IBS or without and uh, only with IBS, but without endometriosis. They included 160 patients with room three criteria for IBS. 60 of them suffer from endometriosis. 100 had no endometriosis. And they recommend a four weeks food med diet. It's a low carb diet. And over 70% of the endo patients reported a significant improvement of the bowel symptoms in comparison to only 50% of the non endometritic patients. So that is something patients with endometriosis can try, they can do by themselves, and that could lead to improvement of the situation. And I think also this is a nice study looking for the nickel sensitivity in patients with endometriosis that reflects the allergic and hyper or high um, dysregulated immune situation of these patients. And they were able to show in an open label pilot study that a low nickel diet was helpful for these patients that they have lower abdominal symptoms. We did also a very small study and we recommended to try probiotica and um, patients in patients with bowel symptoms and in six of eight patients there was an improvement of the symptoms um, observed. That is a very small published uh, unpublished study of our center. So coming to an end, the endo belly is a very complex um, situation. Um, endometriosis is a chronic inflammatory disease. Patients with endometriosis suffer from gastrointestinal associated symptoms. They have not yet been a focus of attention so far. Both inflammatory processes as well as gastrointestinal symptoms can be triggered by dysbiosis of the bowel. Anti-inflammatory diet improves the bowel symptoms and reduces pain severity. Patients report improvement of the symptoms after the use of probiotica. And the microbiome can play a role at different levels, but there, there are a lot of hints for this, but we need more data. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm looking for your questions.